our focal scripture for this weekend is Isaiah 41, 13. And it reads, that's right, because I, your God, have a firm grip on you and I'm not letting go. I'm telling you, don't panic. I'm right here to help you. When I initially saw this particular scripture, figuratively speaking, I could visualize God holding my hand. And actually in the New King James Version, it indicates that God is holding our right hand figuratively. He's holding our right hand. But in this scripture, again, it says that's right because I, your God, have a firm grip on you and I'm not letting go. I'm telling you, don't panic. I'm right here to help you. So again, initially when I first saw this scripture, I could visualize God holding me and carrying me through every situation of life. Me not panicking about the situations going on around, around me because I knew that he was here to help me. And ladies, as I began to study this scripture even a little bit more, God revealed to me that this scripture has everything to do with our relationship with him. It's hard to trust someone when you don't have a relationship with them. It's hard to put your, your everything in, 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 in God if you don't necessarily have a relationship with him. So he's holding us. But ladies, I have a question for you. And I do, I do want you to answer this question in the chat. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to see your feedback. So here's the question. God is holding us, but what do you do while God is holding you? It's not a trick question. I just want you to think about it. What do you do while God is holding you? And I'm looking at your, oh yes, I see your comments. Yes, we pray. Surrender, yes, Lord, we pray, yes, yes. Rest in him, I love that, be still, yes, God. Cry, yes, sometimes you have to cry and God, he does see our tears. Yes, Lord, we surrender, we pray, we worship. Yes, wait patiently on the Lord, worship. I love it, I love it, rest in him. Again, here's the question, what do you do while God is holding you? Have faith, I love it. All right, now, since I, I have asked you this particular question and, and I, I want you to internalize that question, I want you to think about it. Yes, give him control. So now let's take it to another level. While God is holding us, ladies, we do everything that I just saw you, that, that I just saw you put into the chat. We trust him, we surrender, we rely on him. But ladies, while he's holding on to us, guess what we need to do? <laughs> our, our beautiful lady, Sister Patricia, she just told us, we hold on, we hold on. And what I would like to teach you tonight, I want to, if I could put a title to, to, to what I have to talk to you tonight about, my title would be, we must strengthen our grip. On the screen, there's a lady. Ladies, she is pulling. She's putting all, she's pulling everything she has into what she's doing. She has a strong grip. So again, if I could put a title to my conversation tonight, the title would be, we have to strengthen our grip. <clears throat> Referring back to the scripture, as I mentioned before in Isaiah 41, 13, after I prayed about that particular scripture, again, figuratively, I can see God holding my hand. But as I continued to think about and meditate on him, he revealed to me that it's about my relationship with him. I have to strengthen my grip. 
I have to strengthen my, my me relying in him. What does it mean to hold on? When we hold on to Christ, that means that we're relying in him. We're, we're putting all of our trust in him. Everything that you all just responded to, that's what we need to do. However, as God is holding us, as God is holding us, there's things that we need to do. We must strengthen our grip. And when we strengthen our grip, that means that we're strengthening, strengthening our relationship with him. Because again, it's hard to strengthen your grip if you can't trust the person that you're strengthening the grip in. It's kind of like, let, let me kind of break this down for you. Imagine you holding someone's hand, a person that you trust. And imagine that they're holding your hand so tightly, but your hand is very loose. I don't know if y'all can see me but your hand is very loose. I want y'all to get this point. And if you can't see me, visualize it. That your hand is very loose. In order for you to strengthen your grip on that person, you have to have a relationship with that person. You have to be able to trust that person. You have to understand that that person is gonna have your back. So tonight, again, metaphorically speaking, we must strengthen our grip. And basically, the big idea for tonight is that when we strengthen our grip, we must strengthen our relationship in Christ. So I have three main things I want to talk about tonight, and I hope it blesses you. Three areas that we need to strengthen so that we can have a stronger relationship in Christ. And again, when we have a stronger relationship in Christ, our grip in him gets stronger. So number one, we must use the power and the weapon of prayer. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses 16 through 18 reads, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In order for us to strengthen our grip in Christ, we must utilize our power, our weapon of prayer. Now in my hand, and again, I hope you all can see me, but in my hand, I have what you call grip hand strengtheners. And I know I'm, I'm clicking them. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I'm clicking them. This particular utensil, whenever you use this, it strengthens your hand. It strengthens the muscles in your hand. Many athletic people that use this, Many people who lose mobility in their hands or they have to strengthen their hands, they use this particular equip equipment. So metaphorically speaking, when we're strengthening our grip in Christ, number one, we have to improve our prayer life. As the scripture says, we must pray during the good times and the bad times. Don't wait until a pandemic comes to right. pray. Right. Don't wait until you lose your job to pray. Don't wait until you have problems in your marriage to pray. No, the best time to pray is on those sunny days when you're in good health, when everything, when, when you're still in that honeymoon stage of your marriage, your, and I say your extended honeymoon stage, because you know what? Marriage is awesome. And your entire marriage, the entire life of your marriage can be the honeymoon. But don't just pray when your children begin to have issues. Pray on their best days. Pray on your best days. Pray on your worst days. So in order for us to strengthen our grip and to strengthen our relationship in Christ, we must pray without ceasing. We must pray at all times. Meditate on him all time, day and night. Secondly, we must purposely make time for prayer and study. With everything going on around us, with so many different distractions, it's very easy to, um, to stray away from God. But we must be intentional about our prayer life and intentional about our study time. So ladies, again, and I have my grip strengtheners right here. If you can't see me, I hope you can hear it. When we pray, we're strengthening our relationship with him. And when we strengthen our relationship with him, he's holding us, but we have a firm grip on him. Our grip on him gets stronger and stronger and stronger. 
Secondly, in order to strengthen our grip, we must realize and be very intentional about the people we are surrounded by. People. Proverbs 13, chapter 20 reads, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Here they are again. I don't know if you can hear it. I have it up to my, I don't know if you can see it, but I have this up to my speaker. I have my, my grip strengtheners. God gives us discernment. You need to be very careful about your inner circle. Be very careful about who you um, spend your time with. Be very careful about the conversations you're listening to. The, the people you hang around, your inner circle, they should replenish you and not drain you. They should lift you up and not tear you down. Whenever you are, and let's see, how can I put this? Whenever you are unsure <laughs> about a person in your life, ask God, pray about it. Whenever you are confused about a person who's trying to enter your life, ask God and rely on him. I promise you, he'll answer you. Whenever you are kind of discouraged about the people who are in your life, ask God to show you who needs to be around you and who does not need to be around you. And Lord, I tell you, when you have the right ladies around you in your inner circle, they will pray for you when you're down. They will lift you up right on time. Even times when you don't even tell them what's going on in your life, God will allow them to send you a scripture just out of the blue. God will allow them to give you a call and they will call you and they will pray for you right on the spot. So ladies, here's my, my, my hand uh, strength, strength, my hand strengtheners. And I see you all can see me now. <laughs> all right, next and my last point. It is important that we protect our peace. This is a big one. Philippians 4 and 7 reads, one of my favorite scriptures. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. In this particular scripture, God is letting us know that no matter what we're going through, he protects us. He'll give us peace with everything, even right now, even this entire week, I've had to kind of, I had to pull myself away from CNN. I had to pull my way, myself away from, from the media because it's so discouraging. God will protect your mind with everything going on around you. Rely on him, strengthen your grip, strengthen your relationship with him so that even when you get a bad report, you can rely on him and he will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. It is so important that you protect your peace. And some practical ways of protecting your peace is number one, right now, social media is a huge part of our lives right now. Facebook, Twitter, um, Snapchat, Instagram, they have good points. They do, they, they, they have a good place. But sometimes you have to steal away from that. Sometimes you have to be very discerning about what you read and what you don't read. You have to be very discerning about what you respond to and what you don't respond to. You have to be very discerning about what you intake into your mind because whatever gets into your mind ultimately can get into your heart and that will disturb your peace. You must be very careful about the conversations you listen to. I know everybody can relate. People on your job, people in your neighborhood, even some of your friends. You know, some, some of the uh, associates, I, I don't necessarily want to say friends, but some of the um, associates that, that hang around you. Whenever you notice that there is something that's not pleasing to God, 
that's when you have to protect your peace. You have to shut that down. God can allow you and he can show you how to control your thoughts. And again, you all protect your peace. When you're protecting your peace and you're protecting the things that, that comes into your heart, you're strengthening your relationship with God. When you shut down those ungodly conversations, when you shut down that ungodly gossip, God is protecting your peace. So it's important you protect your peace. Rely on God to show you what you need to listen to and, and what you don't need to listen to, who you need to be around and who you don't need to be around. Now, Isaiah, 41.13 reads, that's right, because I, your God, have a firm grip on you and I'm not letting go. I'm telling you, don't panic. Girl, I'm right here with you. And I'm sorry, y'all, I had to improvise. But girl, queen, ladies, princess, godly lady, woman of God, I'm right here with you. Figuratively speaking, God is holding you. God is holding you. God is holding you. This God is holding you. Again, in the New King James Version, it says that he's holding our right hand. Figuratively speaking, God is holding you. This is God. Y'all just imagine this. This is God. This is me. Okay. When I strengthen my relationship in him, when I pray more, my grip gets a little bit stronger. When I make sure that I'm surrounding myself with the right people who are going to encourage me and replenish me and also hold me accountable. In other words, when I'm wrong, they will call me out. That's strengthening my grip. You need people to call you out sometimes and tell you when you're wrong. That's strengthening your grip. Okay, My grip gets a little bit stronger. When I protect my peace, when I purposely shut Facebook down, when I purposely shut Instagram down, when I look at a post and you say, you know what, that, that's not godly. He, I'm strengthening my grip, strengthening my grip, strengthening my grip. Figuratively speaking, I'm strengthening my relationship with God in prayer by the people I surround myself with and by protecting my peace. I'm strengthening my grip. Now, I would like to direct your attention to the screen. And of course, I see you all can see me. The picture that you see is a woman. It's a com competitive game of tug of war. Tap, here's a tug of war rope, all right? The lady who's on the screen, y'all look at her face. She's, she's powerful. She's been praying. She's been surrounding herself by the right people. She's been protecting her peace. And she's like, you know what? I've, I've got this. I've got this. So now that I have in my hand, I don't know if you can see me, but let me explain this to you. Right here in my hand, I have a rope. And this tug of war rope, just imagine, figuratively, imagine that you, are, you and God are, are on one side, and the troubles of life are on the other. Anxiety is on the other. Loneliness is on the other end. Satan, with all of, of his strategies, is on the other end. Unruly children are on the other end. Problems in your marriage and on the other end. Gossip on the other end, people talking down to you, not treating you the way you need to be treated, not treating you the way you're supposed to be treated, on the other end. So again, right here in front of me, on one side, just imagine this, you and God are on the left side and all the struggles of life are on the right side. When you, Strengthen your guilt, your grip, you can pull 
And again, I don't know if you can see me, but on my screen, I'm pulling this tug of war. Me and God are on the left side and we're pulling and we're pulling and we're pulling. But then you know what? On the right hand side, they're kind of pulling too. But no, 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 no. I said, oh no, God, we're holding on. I'm holding on to you. I'm holding on to you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. When you begin to pray, you understand scriptures that God has placed in your heart and you pull, you pull, you pull. Again, I know if y'all can see me pulling, but I'm pulling. I have my rope up. I have my tug of war up. Me and God are on the left side and we're pulling and we're pulling, but yet it's still on the right side. They're pulling as well. When you strengthen your grip, you're strengthening your relationship with Christ. Again, he's holding on to you, but our responsibility is to strengthen our relationship. The stronger your relationship is with Christ, the stronger your grip will be. The stronger your prayer life is, the stronger your grip will be. The stronger the, the people who are in your life, the stronger your grip will be. The stronger your peace is, the stronger your grip will be. And when you get into those tug of wars of life, you and God are on the left side and everything that's going on is on the right side. Sickness, distractions, you can easily pull, pull, pull. They may get a few inches, but then you continue in prayer and you pull and you pull and you pull. Rely on God. I'm sorry, y'all. Rely on God. He has us. He's protecting us. He has a, he wants a relationship with us. In the tug of wars of life, you're pulling, you're pulling, you're pulling. But you got to remember Satan is pulling too. But you're pulling through prayer, people, peace, prayer, people, peace, prayer, people, peace. God has you. He's surrounding us. He has us. And again, figuratively speaking, he's gripping us. But as he's gripping us, we can't, we can't be like this. Like, <laughs> we have to grip. We have to strengthen our grip, strengthen our relationship with him because God is our everything. And when we hold on to him, we acknowledge that he's protecting us He's giving us peace and there's no need to panic because God is on our side. I hope I blessed you tonight. I hope I've said something that has edified your spirit. I hope that God throughout this weekend, God will reveal something to you that will be edifying to you, that will strengthen you those weak areas in your life, I hope you get strengthened this weekend. Those questions that you have about life, I hope those questions are answered this weekend. Thank you, God, for everything that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be able to rely on you. And ladies, as I close, this is my last comment before I close us out in prayer. My prayer for you is that you understand that God is holding us, but it's our responsibility that we have to respond to him holding us. He's holding us, but we, 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 we have to hold on. We have to hold on to him. We have to acknowledge that we know he's holding on to us. He wants us to acknowledge that he's holding on to us. He wants us to tell the world that he's holding on to us. He wants us to tell everybody that in the struggles of life, in the tug of wars of life, that we win every time. He wants us to be able to praise him and worship him and edify him as he's holding us. We have to strengthen our grip. And when we strengthen our grip, that just means we strengthen our, we're strengthening our relationship. The stronger your relationship is with Christ, the stronger your grip will be. And you can honestly say, I'm holding on. Let us pray.
God, I thank you. Thank you, God, for your strength. Thank you for the grip that you have on us. Through sickness and pain, thank you for the grip. Through anxiety and worries, thank you for, for your grip. Throughout the struggles of life, thank you for gripping us. Thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight, God. We give you praise and we give you honor. I pray that every single lady online tonight has been edified. I pray that every single lady on this line tonight learns about you and, and now they clearly understand what their responsibility is as you're holding on to them. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for your fire. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. And again, God, thank you for your grip. Thank you for gripping us. Because God, we're holding on to you. Through everything that's going on around us, we're holding on to you. Thank you for getting us through the year of 2020, a year like no other. We've had family members to pass away. But thank you for your grip. We've had hard times, but thank you for your grip. We've lost jobs, but thank you for your grip. We've been confused, God, but thank you for your grip. We've been worried about the political atmosphere in our world, but thank you for your grip. Thank you, God, for your strength. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for your time. I pray that you meditate on our word tonight. I pray that your prayer life is strengthened. I pray that your relationships are strengthened. I pray that your peace is strengthened. Don't forget, girl, protect your peace. Be discerning about the people who are in your circle and pray without ceasing. I love you all and have a good night.